What's going on, guys? We are back. RLCS is about to begin. So how did we get to these top 16 teams in Swiss? Let's go over exactly what happened. We're going to do a little window capture here so you guys can see. And I'm in my green screen new office looking fantastic. I think it's working pretty well. My hands are a little bit outliney, but we're still trying to dial it in. So we're going to come over here. We're going to talk about what exactly happened. The invitational qualifier was the first thing that happened for NA. Top 16 teams were seeded by a committee of seeders. I was not on this committee. I just want that to be known now. So now I can critique it as we go here. I think the one uh, team that was left out Shopify rebellion after having a good roster Royale was left out. I believe they went three and one in that Swiss lost in the quarterfinals to complexity. It looked pretty solid throughout. I think that was the one team. I think most people wanted to see in this invitational qualifier, but it's the top 16 teams. They battle it out until there's only eight that remain uh, after Swiss that happened. They go on to the main event. The other eight teams go back down to the close qualifier which then all the open qualifier teams have to make it to that point to go to the closed qualifier. But this is how the invitational qualifier went out. Space Station, now with LJ on the team, went a perfect 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, including taking down FaZe, which is absolutely huge, uh, for a 3-0 sweep, and then taking down Optic Gaiman, which is, you know, Reddle's new team. So that was absolutely monumental for them. That looks fantastic going into the main event. They will be the number one overall seed heading into the first main event. Version one doing as well as they have been. Furia is now obviously a roster transfer that came over. They take down Furia. Another big win there. Taking down Dig as well and Complexity. Dig and Toss. One of those surprise teams making it out of the top eight. So that means version one looks even better because they took them down in that first round as well. 3-0. So as you go down, pretty normal. Like We see a G2 Fell a little bit short going uh, 3-1, losing to Optic Gaming in round two. Uh, so that was a little bit of a surprise. Complexity, 3-1. I think most people would see RR now on that team. We're expecting them to look pretty solid. Looking to make a push for a top five spot in North America. So they make it through pretty comfortably, 3-1. and one. Optic Gaming make it through as well. Riddles and AJ and Magic Bear. So that's a 3-1 there as well. Uh, but barely making it so. Three game five wins, and then they got swept. So the worst game differential you could possibly have. Uh, but still, pretty good result all in all there. We can maybe zoom this in just a little bit. Um, and then as we go down the line, FaZe Clan 3-2 is a surprise that they fell down to 3-2. But you expect them to always make it out of these rounds, and they do so again here. So a little bit shaky, but have time to perform. Rogue, big win over FaZe. Big win over NRG to make it through. Uh, so that's a surprise result there for a top eight spot. And Dignitas making it through. Taking down Furia in that final round. Absolutely huge there. Dignitas roster. I always forget who's on all these rosters at this point. Let's just take a quick gander. Andy Trees and Delta uh, moving on to that squad there. So well done for them. I think that's pretty big for Trees. I think Andy also has been underrated. I feel like Delta has been probably evenly rated across the board like not expecting a whole lot from him but hey this could be that breakout year i think andy and Dries can really carry that team and if delta continues to perform then hey you never know what happens with dig but they finish in the top eight teams on the outside looking in that were a little bit surprising was probably nrg i think some people expected this but i don't think i expected them to not make it out of swiss in a top eight uh spot like i expected them to probably just barely make it in in that three and two round they did go to the three and two round they played rogue that like to me like i would have energy winning that most times but rogue with a 3-0 sweep so hats off to them didn't make a roster move we're kind of playing around uh, with their roster moves uh throughout the offseason a lot of rumors going around but nothing actually worked out so we got aqua gyro and taroko coming back and they had a solid top eight performance to begin. So keep in mind, this is top 16 invitational qualifier to make it to the main event. But they're going to play another one of these. That's going to look very much the same as this one. So you're going to have to perform again. But now you see teams that there is a possibility that they could. A uh, Toss or Rogue. I feel like the NA bubble scene in general seems to be getting pretty strong. The only problem is there's a lot of these international transfer moves that we're going to talk about that is going to push out a few of these bubble teams. One of the notable teams we'll get to is Turbo's team was knocked out. But when you look at the inter 
uh, national transfers, we see Furia coming over. Obviously, top four team at Worlds. Very, very good team. I would have them at least top five in the world because of what they did throughout all the majors. Um, so they're coming over. So they're fighting for one of those top five NA spots. I think they could falter at times because now you have to compete with the very best every online regional compared to in Sam where it's like, all right, final day, the whole competition, maybe not as much going into it. Uh, but another team coming over, Gen G, Mobile One Racing, my oil, apparently Jack, Chronic and Nolly coming over. Now, uh, this team on paper to me doesn't look that great personally. I know people have apparently Jack rated very highly. Nolly, uh, like after the K Corp, he's rated very highly as well. But he had trouble finding teams that meshed with him for a long time throughout all of last year, throughout all of uh, RLCSX. Apparently, Jack, I watched all his games, obviously, like I was on the dig stream. I think positionally can make some mistakes, and I worry about this team. Brendan Chronic is like a young phenom, but hasn't done anything yet in the threes RLCS space. I feel like this team is not looking that good. Personally, I would have stayed in EU. I get why they came over money, I would assume to NA, uh, but I think you would have had a better chance in EU based on all these teams now, where it's getting a little bit more top-heavy in NA, and also have an international team come over, Furia, like complexity improved and all that, so I worry about this team, I could see them, like, I think they are a one major team uh, out of the three splits, and may and on the cusp of Worlds, it depends how well NA does, like, at these majors, but that's where I have them, while in EU, I think they could have competed for maybe two majors, uh, maybe three. Uh, but they would have went with someone different, right? Like, I think that they got Chronic over here because they came over to NA side. Like, I was surprised that you make that move and you don't pick up someone that has more history, that has more backing uh, in the RLCS, but maybe there was no one available and they had to move because of the Orc. I'm not really sure. So uh, we'll see how that one all plays out. But that's the Invitational Qualifier. So that's how we got there. Now let's go into the Close Qualifier. So this will be the top 16 again uh, coming through. We talked about Shopify, and obviously we'll see some ads here. Beautiful. I should have probably cut those out. I'm so not professional here. Jeez. Sorry, guys. Uh, here we go. Now we can even zoom it in more. Look at me making moves. All right, hold on. Let me just cut this out. Bam. Oh, look what I can do. Mom, get the camera. All right, here we go. So close qualifiers. Shopify obviously had to go through that open qualifier and they then came through in this close qualifier and showed why they should have been in that invitational qualifier. 3 0 set. Sorry, Rapid, but uh, getting no wins at all this whole month. Sorry, bud. You're just getting L's. You're just picking up a lot of L's. Uh, then we got Furia taking them down in five. And Pittsburgh Knights actually went to five with them as well. Who's on Pittsburgh Knights nowadays? Like, I always forget. Oh, yeah. Sosa Cheese, ZPS. Okay. Um, a lot of new rosters. It's going to take a while. It's been a lot, a lot of moves. Uh, but energy showed what they were made of with a 3-0 in the close qualifier. So they're sitting at ninth best team in NA right now. And I think that's not the worst. I would have them like seven to eight, probably. Uh, so sitting at nine, there's still time to improve. There's still time to make it into this regional event. Because now every team that made it to the Swiss, they're starting over, right? It's zero zero. Obviously, first round matchups are based on where they seeded in the invitation qualifier plus close qualifier, but I'm not worried about them. Gen G mobile racing. I think a three, one is pretty solid to cross the board losing to PK again. PK had a pretty good tournament here. Um, so uh, them sitting as like the 10th best in an a or maybe 11th best is not the end of the world. There's still room for improvement there. And again, it all comes down to this regional at this point, the fall open uh, Knights. Oh, I'm sorry. Now it's just the Knights. It's not Pittsburgh Knights anymore. I miss this. What is going on? I live in Pennsylvania. Come on, rep the brand. Anyway, Furia 3-1. Again, shaky, but they only lost one game five. So uh, you can't fault them too much. They won a game five to get in versus Illuminosity. And don't forget that Complexity did the same exact thing. Didn't look that good when they came over. Went through into the close qualifier. Did well there, a 3-1 victory, and then made it to the major. So, Furia, they still have time. It didn't really matter at the end of the day. All that mattered is just getting to the event at this point. Luminosity, Team Axel, which is Gimmick's squad, 
There you go. Ajax, gimmick, and toasty. I kind of like that uh, roster. Like, I think they could make some noise, uh, have a few upsets here or there. Uh, Soul, as well, making it in. Let's go over the roster here real quick. Luminosity, we'll go over because I keep forgetting all these as well. Oh, yeah. Alraz, Lion Blaze, King Tse, and Soul was Drew Knight and Stealth. Oh, yeah. Stealth was looking good throughout that close qualifier. Like, I was watching through Torment Stream, I believe it was. I was trying to watch through him and uh, saw some very, very good plays from Stealth. So those are your 16 teams. So let's go back into what is now playing in the main event. We got Swiss. We got our top 16 teams here. A lot of roster moves, a lot of question marks around pretty much all of these rosters. So we'll see how it all plays out. But that's how they got there. They did an invitational qualifier, which was a, a top 16 seeded by committee. Top eight from that moved to the main event. The other eight went down to the close qualifier to meet the teams that came out of the open, which is literally open to anyone. Like, if you're a platinum and you want to play in it, go for it. Go have fun. Uh, but we are down to our top 16. Space Station will get Soul. V1 versus Axel. Torment versus Gimmick, which should be a lot of fun. G2 versus LG. Complexity versus Furia to open up North America. There's nothing more North America than four... A country's outside of North America battling it out. I can't wait. I can't wait to watch that one. Uh, Optic Gaming versus PK. FaZe versus Gen G. I think that one should be a lot of fun as well. Rogue versus Shopify. That should be a very close match. I, I want to see. I want to see memory. Just, just you know, move up into that limelight again because it's been like he's been very underrated for a while. He's been battling. You know, obviously he was a grand finalist team a couple times with Beast Mode. Beast Mode leaves. Everything's in shambles, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so I want to see memory. I want to see him pop off. And then we got Energy versus Dignitas. So Dignitas, a huge surprise, making the top eight. Energy, obviously, everyone expects them to do well. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, but that is what is on the docket for Friday, for day one. It starts at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So definitely check that out. We're playing all five rounds to get to the single elimination bracket, which is right down here. So... Wherever you land, that's where you go into the bracket. Best sevens, I believe, across the board. I could be wrong with that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, and we'll see how it all plays out for the first regional. The only other things to note uh, format-wise, basically the same stuff going in fall, uh, except for the points. Points have been reduced across the board. It's a little bit more top-heavy by like a couple percentage points than it used to be. So you'll get a little bit more of a bonus for uh, taking a win or taking like a top three spot. But very, very small percentage points. Like, I think uh, a few people went back and checked the points from last year versus uh, this year and tried to put those points onto those teams from last year. And only, like, two or three things changed very, very small uh, things there. So, for the most part, tiny bit more top-heavy. But at the end of the day, it's pretty close to the same. Like, as we get to winter and spring, that's where the bigger differences happen. It's mostly spring. Spring is valued way more heavily than it was uh, for this season. Basically, I think the season was roughly a 33% bump from fall to spring by the end. Now it's more of a 50% bump. Uh, so, uh, my numbers could be slightly off, but I think it's about that. Uh, so that'll change things a little bit where spring teams will have a better chance there. The other thing is an invitational regional. The last regional of fall is top 16 in points over the whole RLCS year will go into these invitationals. Um, so it's th the same thing, except there's no open qualifier portion of that. So that'll happen in every single split. It'll always be for total points, though, in the RLCS. That kind of hurts teams a little bit, like if you form a new team in spring. But my idea is uh, what I'm assuming that they want is they're trying to keep rosters, like two-thirds of rosters, to be around f for an entire year. So a little bit of an incentive to do that, it wouldn't have mattered, say, for Team Liquid's case. Uh, last year, they still would have made top 16 in points anyway, going into that spring regional three. So it very likely wouldn't matter much, but I think it's just a, a small incentive for teams to be a team for an entire year. Like, instead of, like, oh, we had a bad fall, so let's just completely disband. Now they might think twice about it, because, like, well, we're 18th in points if we disband and form new teams, we, we have to gain even more points to try and make it to that winter uh, invitational. So I think that's where they were going with that. Um, so we'll see how it all plays out. It's going to be a great season. I'm excited. 
I will actually be there tomorrow for the day one. And a little spoiler is here, but I'll be hosting the first two rounds. So definitely come check it out on twitch.tv slash Rocket League. It's going to be a blast. I'm excited for the season to officially begin. I know Mina's playing like right now, technically. But, you know, hey, we're here for a North American video. So this is North American RLCS. It begins tomorrow. Can't wait. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.